Hey, this is Mr. Aiden from MrAiden.com, and this is the third installment of Thermodynamics uh, in AP Chemistry, Unit 6. This is more ways to calculate enthalpy. Uh, the first session we looked at delta G, delta H, and delta S, what each one of these three means, and how they're put together. The second session we were taking a look at how do we calculate enthalpy from a calorimetry experiment. And then there's three, actually four more ways to calculate enthalpy. That's bond enthalpy, heat formation, Hess's law, an enthalpy diagram. So let's uh, take a look at each one of these things. Bond enthalpy. When do you use bond enthalpy? Uh, when we're breaking and forming bonds. When they give you a chemical reaction and they give you bond enthalpies, use, guess what? Bond enthalpies. Remember, breaking bonds is positive, endothermic, positive, positive, positive. So any, anything on the reactant side will be breaking bonds and not breaking bad, but breaking bonds, and they're going to be positive. Everything on the product side is going to be negative because we're forming bonds. It's releasing energy. And of course, that breaking bonds, which is positive, that endothermic, is the activation energy, the energy to make sufficient, uh, re sufficient collisions, efficient collisions to break the bonds. Now, when you have bond enthalpy problems, draw out the bonds. Don't do anything except for draw the bonds first. Okay, that'll be the easiest way to do it. So let me show you a problem here. Here we have, of course, we got bond enthalpies. So what are we going to do? We know the delta H of this reaction. The enthalpy of the reaction is negative 264 kilojoules per mole. And this reaction, we want to draw out the bonds. So the first thing we're going to do is draw the bonds. We have a triple bond for the nitrogen gas. We got single bonds, three single bonds for the fluorine gas. And then our NF3 is going to be a trigonal pyramidal shape. There's two of these molecules, and there's going to be six bonds. So if you take a look, when I take a look at the bond enthalpies, we know it's positive 946 because it takes 946 kilojoules to break one of these bonds. We see the fluorine, it's three times some number X. That's what we're going to be trying to find. We're trying to find the bond enthalpy of the, the FF bond. And we know, see the products, is negative 6, because there's 6 bonds, times 272. So we create a little bit of an equation, 946 plus 3x, because that's breaking the bonds, it's positive, minus 6 times 272, which is negative 1632. And that equals your bond enthalpy of negative 264 kilojoules per mole. We do a little bit of algebra, and we find out one of these bonds, the X, is equal to 141 kilojoules per mole. That's bond enthalpies. So let's go on to heats of formation. And when, when do we use heats of formation? We use heats of formation when you're given the delta H of formation, the delta G of formation, or the delta S of substances. Of, of chemical species. Uh, when do we use bond enthalpies? When we're looking for the bonds. But when do we use heats of formation? When, we're, when we've been given these values of substances. And we can use one of three equations from your equation sheet. We can do products minus reactants. That's the summation of the products minus reactants. And it's the same for delta S for entropy, delta H enthalpy, or delta G gives free energy. Uh, let me show you a problem here. Here you can see we have a chemical reaction, three silver, uh, three silver particles plus four nitric acid uh, gives you three silver nitrate plus nitrogen monoxide and two liquid water molecules. And we want to find the enthalpy of the reaction. Okay. Now what did they give you? They gave you the standard heats of formation. So we got to use products minus reactants. And so what do we do is develop the equation. The heat of reaction equals the summation of the products. So you look at the products. The products are three times silver nitrate. One silver nitrate is negative 101. Plus one mole of nitrogen monoxide, one times 90, plus two moles of the water, that's negative 286. Now that's the summation of the products. Minus the reactants. Now you might ask, why, why don't they give us silver's heat of formation? Because it's zero. Any elemental substance, uh, so uh, silver, copper, uh, hydrogen gas, H2, oxygen gas, O2, these are all have standard heats of formation of zero. You can't form them. God already did. It's, it's screaming to the chemist. It's screaming to the chemist. God is the creator. And so it's zero. It's always going to be zero if it's an elemental substance. Plus 4 times negative 207 because that's our reactants. 
We just do that math, and it's positive 43 kilojoules per mole. That's the enthalpy. Let's go to the third one, which is Hess's Law. When do we use Hess's Law? We use Hess's Law when we're given a list of reactions. And we can do two things. We can flip the reaction, which flips, flips the enthalpy sign from positive to negative, or you can multiply or divide the reaction, which multiplies or divides the, uh, the enthalpy of the reaction as well. So let me show you a reaction here. Here we have one half iodine plus one half chlorine gives you iodine iodine chloride, chloride, and we know they gave us one reaction. We, we know his heat of formation is, enthalpy of formation is 18 kilojoules per mole. They also gave us in the problem from iodine sol to iodine gas, that enthalpy is 62 kilojoules per mole, and we want to calculate the delta H for this reaction. I2 gas plus Cl2 gas gives us two ICL gas. We've been given a list of reactions. So we take the first reaction, and what do we have to do for that first reaction to make it look like that target reaction is? We have to double it. we got to multiply everything by 2, which multiplies the iodine by 2, the chlorine by 2, and the ICL by 2, which means we got to also multiply the delta H by 2 to become 36 kilojoules per mole. What do we do to the final reaction? Well, we want iodine gas to be a reactant, so we have to flip that reaction. And when we flip that reaction, that, that positive 62 becomes negative 62. What do we do at the end of the day? We add those two enthalpies. Often it's called Hess's Law of Heat Summation. So we add those, and we get negative 26 kilojoules per mole for my heat, my enthalpy of my reaction. Well, the last thing is enthalpy diagrams. You've seen these before. You can see reactants, that positive activa activation energy to break bonds. Uh, given the correct amount of energy and the right orientation, and then it releases energy. That activated complex is when it's all in terms of our, uh, our atoms, very high potential energy. And then it goes down, and the difference between the products minus the reactants, like in the heat's formation, is the enthalpy. And of course, what does a catalyst do? A catalyst lowers the activated complex. It lowers the activation energy, but it does not change the enthalpy. Well, the big thing with these is uh, whether it's Hess's law, whether it's bond enthalpies, whether it's uh, heats of formation, or whether it's energy diagrams, they're all the same. But what we want to do is we want to be able to recognize which one are we going to use, and then we go to how do we use it. I uh, hope this helped. Have a good uh, rest of your break. This is MrAiden.com signing off.